Hey there, it's Rachel from All About The House. If we haven't met before, I'm a graphic designer with a printable shop on Etsy and I'm totally addicted to making printables and for that I use Photoshop. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick Photoshop tutorial on how to make a scallop border. This tutorial will be added to the free graphic design video tutorials library um, which you can access via my blog and I'll include a link below as well. So these are some of the other tutorials that are in it. So there's quite a few tutorials in there. Um, so I'll include a link below if you're interested, but for now let's get into the tutorial. So you'll need to open up Photoshop and then create a new template, so go to File New. You can make it any size that you want, but you'll probably want to consider what you actually want to use the scallop border for. So if you wanted to just make some pretty um, note-taking paper with a scallop border up the top and the bottom, or if you wanted to do like a planet um, insert, like a list that you can laminate and then write on with a whiteboard marker, I do have a free one of those on my blog. I'll include a link below if you want to download that one. Um, so basically think of how you want to use it and then you'll set up your template to suit that. Um, gift tags are another good way that you can do a scallop border. But for this one, I'm just going to show you guys how to do it. So I'll just use a normal piece of paper size of US paper and then hit OK. Alright, so let's make our scallop border. So the size of your scallops will also be determined based on the size that you chose for your template. So if you've got a small thing, so if you're just doing a gift tag, obviously your circles will be smaller. So I recommend that you do a sketch on a piece of paper to see like how big you want them to be and then you can measure it with a ruler and then you'll know what size you should make them in Photoshop. So I tend to sketch things out on paper and then transfer them digitally on my computer or you can just experiment, do a couple of test prints until you're happy with it. Alright, so to make our scallop border we need to add some circles. So come over to the shape tool, right click so you've got this secondary menu that appears and choose the ellipse tool. You want to make sure that you've got it set to shape and then choose a fill color. You don't have to do a fill color. You could have scallops that just have like an outline with a just like no color in between. You could also do ones that have two color tones. You might have like a light blue for the outer border and then dark blue for the actual scallop. There's so many different ways that you can experiment with these and I'll give you a couple of examples towards the end of this video. So for this one, I'm going to make mine this pretty blue color and I'm going to just turn off the stroke. Um, which is a border. So if you wanted to add that two color tone effect, you would choose two different colors up here. All right, so now we can create our circles, which will then convert into a scallop. So to create a perfect circle, you can do ovals, but I think circles end up looking nicer um, for a scallop. You need to hold down shift on your keyboard, left click and drag your mouse out, and that will make a perfect circle. If you know the size that you want your circle to be, so when you did your sketch, and you measured it up and you want to just use that, you want to left click and then enter in your dimensions. So if I did a sketch and decided that one inch was my ideal size, you would just type that in. So obviously IN for inch, CM for centimeters, you get the idea. And then hit OK. So we've got our first um, circle, which we can convert into a scallop, but obviously we're going to need a few more of them. So click on your move tool and then I like to left click and drag to move it down to the edge of the page. You want to press Control T and then this will bring up all of these like squares showing on the shape and you want to make sure that you've got about half of it off the edge of the page. So you can left click and drag and then you'll feel it like snap to the edge here. If your version of Photoshop is not doing that, make sure you have the snap tool selected which uh, is in the view menu and then if you go to snap to and then you have all these things ticked it will automatically find the edge of the page for you which makes it a huge time saver and it makes everything like neater and more accurate. So you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. When you've got it half you can hit enter. Now that will create like a shallow scallop. If you wanted to make a fatter one you would move it off the edge a bit and then you would draw a rectangle over the top of it but I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So for now let's leave it on the edge of our page and you want to make a whole bunch of copies of these so it fills the whole width of the size of the template that you chose. So I've got that layer selected, I'm going to press Control J to make a whole bunch of copies. If you are experimenting with different sizes for your circles then I recommend that you rename the layer here and put in the size that you use. So I used one inch so you want to probably type in that so you can come back later on and then you'll have the size and you'll know, okay, do I need to make it bigger or smaller, depending on how it looked when you did your test print. All right, so let's make a couple of copies by pressing Control J. I'm just guessing just making a whole bunch of these. You can delete them if you make too many and you can also add more if you haven't made enough. So don't sit there stressing and doing like heaps of math. I tend to just eyeball it anyway. All right, so we've got our last circle selected. 
you want to press Control T on your keyboard with that move tool selected and then you can hold down shift, left click and then drag your mouse across to the right side of your template. You may need to zoom in if you've got a really small circle because these will be close together and will be a bit hard to group. You'll end up getting like this. Um, you won't be able to like click and drag. You'll get those little arrow keys which can be really annoying. So if you want to zoom in you just press control on the plus sign. Alright, and then press enter when you've got it at the edge of your page. So now I just need to distribute all of my circles in between so that it creates our scallop. So we've got our last one selected. You want to hold down shift and then left click to select your first. So now you've got all of your circles selected. And then we've got the magic tool that I love to use in Photoshop, which is the align tool. So these tools are basically pretty much like 100% the reason that I use Photoshop because it makes it so quick and easy to do things like this. So if you hit this button here, this distribute horizontal centers, it will create your scallop effect for you automatically. So that's pretty much how you make a scallop border. So I'll go into a few more tips on how to tweak this. So the first one being if you decide that your scallops are too close together, this is how you can spread them further apart. You click on one of the layers, never choose the last one or the first one because you've already lined those up to the edge of your page. You want to keep them there. You just want to delete one of the ones in between. It can be any of this one from up to here, any of these. Press delete to get rid of it. And then you'll want to redistribute all of your scallops. So, or well, your circles to create your scallop border. So click on the first one, hold down shift and click on the last one, same like you did before and hit that button again and it will now increase the spacing between your scallops. That looks quite nice, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, one of the other tweaks that you could do though if you weren't is to bring your border down. So if you didn't want as much space down here between this point and the edge of your page, you can move everything down. So you've got all those layers selected still from the last bit. If not, remember just click on the first one, hold down shift, click on your last layer and it'll select all of them for you. Don't sit there like individually selecting them using the control key. You just want to hold down shift and it'll make it way quicker to just select all of them all at once. All right, so let's push this down our page a bit. So you can hit the arrow keys on your keyboard to move it down that way. Or if you want to move it down quite a bit, then you can press control T on your keyboard Hold down shift so that it keeps it like in a straight line because you've already aligned this to the left and the right side. You don't want to have to redo that. So if you hold down shift, it will keep it all straight and then you can just bring it down until you are happy with how it looks. So if you want it to be a really thin scallop border, you can put it down low or you can keep like moving it up. Basically, you can just pick however you want it to look. When you're happy with that, you just let go with your mouse and press enter to apply the change. Right, so now we've got our... Um, scallop border. The other thing that you can do is fill in these little white gaps down here and you do that by adding a rectangle. So you want to add a new layer and then come over to the shape tool, right click and choose the rectangle tool and then you can just add this over the top of your scallops. So if you left click and drag you can just eyeball it or you could do the math and be like okay I want this to be 0.5 inches high or however high you want it. And if you want to enter in those dimensions, you would do just like with the circle, you just left click and enter them in. Okay, so now I have my border and it's looking pretty good. So I'm happy with that. What you can do now is create a duplicate of it. So if you wanted to do um, like a scallop border down the bottom and then one up the top to make some cute stationery or like a planner insert, to do that is really easy. You just click on your first layer, hold down shift to select your last one. And then what I recommend you do is create a copy. So duplicate these layers by pressing Control J and then you'll want to move your original ones into a folder. So I like to always keep my original or like my working template files. So if I want to come back to them later on, then they're there. If I want to just tweak the size slightly, if I've done a test print and decided I didn't want them that close together, then I can just come back, delete one and realign them using that tool up there. So that's why I highly recommend that you keep your template files to come back to later on. So I've just clicked this icon down here to create a new folder. Click on your last layer, hold down shift and then drag, um, sorry, hold down shift to select all of them. Then you want to left click and drag to drop them in your folder and I also have that one as well. Cool, so now they're all in there. So you can hit that little down arrow button and it will hide them all from your layers menu. So if you want to make it really uncluttered, because it can get a bit busy with all of your layers in Photoshop, using folders is a good way to hide layers. They're still there, they haven't disappeared, they haven't been deleted or anything. They're still there, they're just like hidden away, it makes it neater and easier to navigate. So if you want to turn those layers off, you would just hit the eye icon. If you want to turn them on, you just leave them on. 
All right, so now we've got our copy here and I'm just going to rename this one as template. Okay, so we can hide that one to save it for later on and now we can merge these ones together. So same deal like we did before, highlight everything by left clicking, hold down shift so you've got them all selected. Now right click and choose uh, rasterize layers and then right click merge layers. So this is going to merge all our layers together. The problem with rasterizing though is that you then can't come back and modify them later on. So if you know that this is the color that you want to use, you are dead set like this is the color, like if it's your brand colors or your favorite color, no question about it. This is the only like scallop board you want to make and this is the color you want to use, then rasterize them and then you can just move it all as one piece. Otherwise, you would want to merge your shapes first. So let's go step backwards. Hold, uh, select all of them, right click and then merge shapes. So now I can move all that as one piece and I can still tweak it. So I'll show you what I mean when we do some recoloring in a sec. Okay, so we've got our layer um, selected, so we might call this the one inch scallop border. And then let's create a copy and move it up to the top of the page. So press Control J and now you want to hold down Shift, left click and drag your mouse up. Ah, sorry, click on your layer, press Control T then hold down shift and then move it up to the top of your page and press enter. So at the moment we've got our um, like rectangle showing so you just need to rotate it. So press control T and then let's flip it around 180. Cool. So now we can move that up and we want to move that to the center again because it went out of line. Cool. So you can eyeball how far you want it to be down the page. You might want the top border to sit down um, further than your uh, lower border so you can see more of like the rectangle up top from the bottom. Play around with it until you're happy with how it looks. So the last thing that I wanted to show you guys was how to change the colors. So with your um, like layer selected, come back to the shape tool and now you can change your fill color. So if you wanted to make it like purple, you can change it easily. If you want to play around with the colors, click on the color picker tool and then pick a color from here. Um, I do have another video on how to use the color tools in Photoshop. I'll include a link below if you wanted to go watch that one. Alright, so we've got our purple and then let's say we wanted to make it like a two color tone. You would then turn on the stroke which will be a border around your shape. So what I like to do is choose the last color that I use, so this color here, and then go with a shade that's slightly darker. So if you like move your mouse inwards here, you can find a darker shade of that same like color scheme. Don't like click down here because that's, well, that one looks pretty good. But usually it'll give you like too much of a contrast if you go like just straight across. Um, up to you though, you can play around, pick whatever colors that you want. And then hit OK. And now we've got our um, border around our circle. So I'll just zoom in a bit so we can see it a bit better. So now we've got like a two color tone um, scallop effect. And if we wanted to increase that so we saw more of the dark color, you would just bump this up to say like five. Just make sure that you keep in mind the size of your border with the size of the circles that you've chosen because as you just saw then, you saw a little bit of it peeking out the bottom. Um, if you haven't added enough of a rectangle down the bottom here, then you will see some of that. So keep that in mind when you're adding your rectangle. That's how you do a two color tone scallop border. If you're looking at this and you decide, actually I want this to just come out a smidge more to the edge, you can resize it. If you're going to increase the size of it, only do it by a tiny bit because it will decrease your image quality. If you like go from this to this, it will be really blurry when you print that because that is huge. So only do like slight tweaks if you do want to do that, um, otherwise I recommend always starting big and then shrinking down later. You can always reduce the size, but increasing it can decrease your image quality. So I've only added a little smidge to the left and the right, so that one will print fine. Just don't go from like 1 to 10 inches, because that will print mm, probably not very good. It'll be a bit like blurry. So when you're happy with that, press enter. Cool, so that's that one done. You could also do the reverse. You could do dark color for your scallops and then a lighter border. You can change it up, so instead of doing a solid um, border, you could do a dash border. Just zoom in so we can see that better. And then the other one that you can do is a dotted border. So there's so many different variations of this that you could do. Oh, the dotted looks cute. So I'll let you play around with it. Um, oh, white also looks good though. I'll just show you what white looks like. It looks pretty schmick. 
Cool, so that's it for this video. That's how you make a scallop border. Remember to keep your template layer so you can come back to it later on. You may want to do a couple of these on your one page and then do a test print and then you can just delete the um, scallops that you didn't like and then just duplicate the one that you did and add it to the top and the bottom. So you could use this for some pretty note paper, gift tags, like a gift um, card, a note card, um, recipe cards, anything like that. There's so many different ways that you can use this. And while this video was a little long, like most of them end up being, because I'm a bit of a chatty Cathy, um, then you can always just, like, just come back and watch it and just watch the part of it where I showed how to do the scallop, which was basically just make your circles and then align them. Um, I'll include a link um, of the little time where I did that, so you don't have to rewatch the whole thing again if you do need a refresher. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. It'll be added to the free graphic design tutorials library, and I'll include a link below for that as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want more like Photoshop and planner related videos. Thanks for watching.